Hi, I'm Ramji Raghavan, the founder and chairperson of the Augustia International Foundation. I'm also a member of DLC's CSR and Philanthropy Committee. And welcome to my DLC talk. What makes a nation prosperous? A key driver of prosperity is innovation and productivity. And innovation and invention are products of creativity. And the foundation of creativity is curiosity. So if you want to build a prosperous nation, you have to first build a curious nation. Now, the good news is research shows that 98% of children between the age of two and four ask questions. Unfortunately, as they go through the school system, by the time of middle school, it's been found that only 58% of children ask questions. Now, I'm familiar with hundreds, possibly thousands of schools in India, and my sense is not more than 10% of children graduating from school are actually asking or are interested in asking questions. In other words, you start school as a question mark and end up as a full stop. And that really works against the whole model of building innovation, creativity, productivity, and prosperity. So how can we change this? How can we reverse the decline in curiosity that the system seems to actively encourage in many cases? And why that happens is because the way we learn at school, the way we interact with our teachers, it's all about, I talk, you listen. There's very little questioning going on in the classroom. Now, this seems to be a complicated, perhaps a complex challenge for any nation. How do you transform the education system from the grassroots? How do you shift from what to learn to how to learn? The good news is there is a solution. And that solution, I think, lies with something as simple as this. It's called the tippy top. This colorful top costs less than 20 rupees. When you keep it on a surface, it sits on its bottom because that's where its weight is, its center of gravity is. But when you spin it, it tips over and begins to spin on its stem. When you first see that happen, you're so surprised, it's so unexpected, even counterintuitive, that you go, ah. And the ah is important because in the ah, your mind is awakened, your curiosity is stirred. And then you begin to wonder, why does that happen? How did it happen? What if? Could it work a different way? The whole process now of controlled inquiry, of discovery, you might experiment, you speak to a friend, a teacher, investigate by reading books or going to the internet. But if you do find the answer, you experience the famous aha effect. So ah and aha are profound ways of learning, in fact, of living. But there is a third element, and that has to do with having fun in whatever you do. The joy of learning, serious fun, laughter, humor, whatever you call it. And that's the ha-ha effect. So ah, aha, and ha-ha are really the secret code to learning to become more innovative, to become a great problem solver, and eventually to contribute to the prosperity of the nation. How you can raise the speed limit of creativity and innovation of a nation that persuaded me to quit my job as a banker in London in the late 1990s and come back to India for good in the early 2000s to start the Augustia International Foundation. And in the spirit of what I've been saying, we started not by saying that this was the answer to the problem of transforming education. Instead, we asked a series of questions. What makes somebody creative, a great problem solver? Is it possible 
that you can learn to become creative or are you born creative? Is creativity in your genes? And if you can, how would you make that happen at scale? How would you, if you like, raise the level of the ocean? And we said one of the ways of doing it, not the only way, but a very powerful and effective way, is by taking things like the tippy top. So we created hundreds of hands-on, counterintuitive science experiments over the last two decades. And we began to disseminate these models and experiments through a lot of very innovative channels like mobile science vans, labs on motorbikes, satellite science centers, a very innovative art program and now a design thinking program that's led to mobile innovation labs and, mo and many innovation hubs across the nation. Now, what I've been saying has profound implications, not just for a school student, but also for students in universities. It's just very similar challenges that they go through. They don't understand why they're learning what they're learning at university. There's very little understanding of how you apply knowledge to real life situations. So you get into a job with very few problem solving skills, teamwork skills, skills to communicate and collaborate, all of which can be engendered through different forms of experiential activity based learning. So whether you're a school student, a university student, a teacher, if we want to transform the quality of teaching in this country, which is so important to transform the education system, teachers have got to learn to learn, not just to spew out and transmit knowledge. To do that, they have to learn to reawaken the child within them, to start asking questions again. Innovative questions, transformative questions, you name it. But it also applies equally to our companies, to our institutions, whether uh, they happen to be political institutions or social institutions. We all have the potential, potential to change, to become more curious. If companies want to innovate, uh, compete better with companies around the world, they have to learn to ask questions. They have to learn to experiment, to discover. Some years ago, uh, Clayton Christensen of the Harvard Business School and a few of his colleagues wrote a book called The Innovator's DNA, and they found five qualities that distinguish the greatest entrepreneurs from the rest of the herd. And guess what those qualities were? The first quality was questioning. The greatest innovators and entrepreneurs are great questioners. The second was observing. Not just looking, but learning to observe. So whether it's the tippy top, or the blue sky, or the leaf of a plant, or the garbage on the street, great innovators observe the question. The third quality was experimenting, because you don't really know the answer. You have to experiment to try and figure out what works, what doesn't work, in what context. So learning to experiment must become a, a life habit. The fourth, a very high order creative skill, if you like, is associating. In other words, connecting the dots of things that appear not to be connected. Now, to become good at that, you have to be a good questioner, a good observer, and a good experimenter because then you have more variables that you can try and play around with and build unusual co connections. And finally, the fifth quality is networking. So whether you're a business person, whether you're running the country, whether you're a school teacher or a headmaster, these four or five qualities are really at the heart of transforming the way you live, the way you produce and create things, and the way you contribute to the welfare of your family, neighborhood, society, the entire country. That's the mission that we are embarked on, to disseminate the spirit of ah, aha, and ha-ha. So join us 
Let's create a movement to make this happen at scale across the country. I would like to thank DLC from the bottom of my heart for this opportunity to talk to you and spread a very, very important message. It's platforms like DLC that can really spread the word and create waves in the right direction. So thank you, DLC.